Hello everybody, I am Dr. Naveen Agrawal and I am an interventional cardiologist practicing at Valsad and Wapi district in Gujarat in India. Today we will be taking up a very interesting and a clinically useful topic. We will be talking whether uh, travel is advisable or whether it is feasible for the cardiac patients and when exactly after a heart attack can the patients be allowed uh, to travel and what exactly should be the travel restrictions which should be given to the patient whenever the patient is planning a travel. Uh, one more important issue is whether the uh, patients with very severe LV dysfunction or very severe heart failure, whether these sort of patients can also be permitted to travel uh, by various means. What means of travel is advisable for these patients, this also we will be discussing. This is a topic made in English video, especially for our viewers who are well versed with English language. जो लोग इस टॉपिक को हिंदी भाषा में देखना चाहते हैं उनके लिए ये टॉपिक हिंदी में अवेलेबल है हमारे चैनल पर नीचे लिंक मैं डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में छोड़ दूंगा आप चाहे तो उसको हिंदी भाषा में देख सकते हैं नाउ कमिंग बैक टू अवर टॉपिक नाउ विल बी टॉकिंग विद द हार्ट पेशेंट्स कैन बी परमिटेड टू ट्रैवल और नॉट सपोज अ पेशेंट हैज़ अ हार्ट अटैक एंड एज अ सिग्निफिकेंट हार्ट फेलियर एंड एल वी डिसफंक्शन यूजली आफ्टर हार्ट अटैक वी कैन परमिट द पेशेंट टू ट्रैवल मे बी आफ्टर टेन टू फिफ्टीन डेज बट अ फ्यू प्रिकॉशंस नीड टू बी कैप्ट इन माइंड a lot of our patients are whether uh, worried whether uh, while traveling because india is a country where roads may or may not be that good so a lot of potholes might also be present on the road a lot of patients are worried whether they can be permitted to travel on the potholes and all and whether that will affect the position of the stent whether uh, if they get a, a sudden bounce on the road or sudden hiccup on the road uh, whether that will affect the position and the functioning of the stent but i should assure you that that is not the case if at all the patient is having a stent deployed usually the position of the stent cannot be moved uh, irrespective of whatever happens to the patient even if the patient meets with an accident also then to the position of the stent usually is not shiftable so a patient need not be worried about the fact that uh, by doing something or by traveling on the road by or having a sharp turn or a sharp bounce on the road or uh, traveling across a pothole on the road uh, the patient will have a movement or a dislodgement of the stent usually that is not the case and the patient need not worry about these things ideally we do uh, advise our patients to uh, travel after a few days or few weeks uh, after a heart attack the later the better but if at all the patient is compelled to travel uh for a important purpose then they can be permitted but there are a few things which the patient needs to be uh, which the patient needs to keep in mind the patients with very weak heart and the patient who have a overt heart failure ongoing chest pain very bad condition and the patients who are electrically unstable and are very likely to collapse on the way these are the patients who ideally we should advise not to travel and uh because usually when they are on a travel they might be staying away from the healthcare facilities and if at all some uh, sudden problem does occur which is very likely to occur in such unstable patients these patients can suddenly deteriorate and it might, might be difficult to reach these patients to the hospital so in this scenario it is advisable for all the clinically unstable patients who have a very severe heart failure or who are electrically unstable or having severe chest pain or just uh, within the first few days or 3 to 4 days after an angioplasty they are usually advised to avoid traveling unless it is absolutely essential uh usually the patient is advised after maybe one month on 15 days to one month after an angioplasty the patient can be tra- uh, allowed to travel uh if the patient travels by an air medium usually that doesn't affect the functioning of the stent and the change of cabin pressure or the oxygen levels at high altitudes usually in a flight scenario doesn't affect the uh, patient and so uh, usually the patient can be permitted to travel by a flight the reason being is uh, that a lot of healthcare facilities are available for emergency purposes at the airport and a lot of times if at all some emergency does occur on the flight also these people do have at least a defibrillator device and a few basic medical kit is available equipment is available to them it is always advisable to inform the airplane staff and the stewardess and the stewards that you have a healthcare issue and uh, you have a cardiac problem with a recent stent deployment or a recent heart attack and you might be having a cardiac issue <coughs> during the course of the problem so that they can be uh, mentally prepared and they can keep their every, uh, equipment ready for use in case of any emergency for the people who want to travel by train usually that is less advisable because the train travel if at all it is a very long duration travel as is a country which is very big and people can travel in train for maybe 48 hours also across uh, one part of the country to the other if at all they are traveling by train it becomes a big issue because uh, you cannot stop the train according to your whims and fancies and if at all you do develop some severe problem or a severe chest pain while you are traveling on a train 
then it becomes a problem and uh, by the time the train stops and the train reaches the next station and you are shifted to a, a hospital for an emergency management that time it could be very late so train travel i think is less advisable for such patients where a recent heart attack or uh, health problem or cardiac problem has occurred although train usually is very comfortable and usually you get uh, a lot of leg room and you can uh, lie around also and you can sleep also in your train so usually train travel is considered very comfortable for these patients but only the big issue is whether you uh, the healthcare facility is easily or rapidly available for these patients or not that might become a e bigger issue while traveling on the road usually that is not an issue because road travel you uh, usually know where which part of the country you are and which is the closest healthcare facility which is available always keep in mind that whenever you are uh, traveling by road and uh, you are traveling for a significant distance you should keep in mind which uh, would be the nearest uh, big hospital where cardiac and healthcare related facilities are available in case of any emergency road travel is slightly convenient in regards that the uh, steering is in your hands and you can control uh, which way and which uh, area you want to travel and you can easily access an hospital in case of any emergency before the symptoms start to get worse in and like this the uh, control is not in your hands while you are traveling in a flight or a train so in road travel this is an advantage but the significant disadvantage is that road travel is slightly more cumbersome more hectic you get a lot of jerks and all travel is much longer and usually it is much more uncomfortable as compared to a train or a aeroplane travel uh, one more thing is that if you are traveling by road you should carry all your medicines and as far as possible a cardiac patient should not be permitted to drive the reason being that even if he doesn't have a heart attack there are high chances that the patient may develop some amount of giddiness or uh, might suddenly fall unconscious in that case if the patient is driving the vehicle suddenly the vehicle might meet with an accident which might be dangerous for the patient as well as for the relatives so if at all you have a heart patient who has had a recent cardiac condition or recent cardiac problem it is always advisable that the patient does not drive he can uh, lie down comfortably on the back seat and can travel ambulance travel is usually required only for the patients who are very unstable and they are being shifted from one hospital to the other if at all uh, once you are discharged and you are comparatively stable then of course uh, if even if uh, the patient needs to be carried from the hospital to the home usually an ambulance is not required unless the patient is taking a discharge against medical advice and is electrically unstable usually in such unstable conditions or in a patient having a severe heart failure or a significant cardiac worsening situation usually the discharge is delayed by a significant extent and once the patient is stable then only they discharge so as far as possible ambulance travel is usually not uh, required in most of the cases you the patient can travel by a by their own vehicle as long as they themselves are not driving the vehicle uh, if at all the patient wants to go abroad they can go abroad but only thing is that uh, uh the hassles of the airport and the line queues of the airport should be ideally avoided because such situations can create a lot of panic and distress in such patients secondly whenever they are going <laughs> by an airplane they should inform the airplane authorities that a certain amount of healthcare problem might occur during the flight and the uh, personnel should be prepared medicine should be carried at all points of time because one big issue is that a lot of time in western countries when the indian people go abroad or uh, in india as you know over the counter medicines are very easily available you show a prescription to a pharmacy person and he gives you the medicine but in the western countries the dispensing laws of medicines are quite strict and if at all the patient does develop a cardiac problem and he doesn't have the medicine then the problem start to worsen so if at all you are going for a long travel Uh, especially to a different country it is always advisable that you carry all your medicines together with you and maybe you carry an extra amount of doses if at all uh, the medicine is not used or uh, returned after some time then you can return it back to the shop to keep away from where you had purchased earlier but it is always advisable that if even if you are going for a trip for one month or 15 20 days it is advisable that you carry uh, ticket is you carry your medicines for at least 2 to 3 months at a time in this era where covid is so common and so suddenly travel air, air restrictions might uh, get in force uh, in a very short duration it is always advisable to carry some extra medicines because if at all something suddenly occurs and in the scenario or suddenly changes you might not be struggling with to have your medicines and you no, might not def, uh, be forced to default your medicines just by the non availability of the medicines one other important issue in western population uh, countries is that usually uh, 
if at all a traveler is going to another country it might be very difficult to access to a card get access to a cardiologist unless the patient develops a heart attack or something like that and is rushed to a hospital uh, a routine opd consultation with a cardiologist might be difficult so better to always carry a few numbers especially of your the cardiologist who is treating you and you can always discuss the circumstances and the uh, patient condition on the phone or the whatsapp even if you are going to a foreign country and uh, uh, keep yourself over prepared rather than under prepared whenever you are going for a international travel it is always advisable to carry a travel insurance whenever you are uh, traveling abroad because a lot of times if at all some cardiac emergency occurs and you are forced to take uh, treatment at a nearby hospital the cost of the uh, surgery or the treatment might be exorbitantly high in western countries so all the people who are traveling abroad if at all they have a significant cardiac problem and are likely to have a heart attack or a uh, sudden cardiac problem they are more advised to have a uh, always advised to have a travel insurance before they travel uh, covering most of the healthcare costs uh, during the course of stay if at all any emergency occurs always it is advisable to carry a health card or an uh, identity card of the patient where everything details about the patient's disease is also mentioned so very time uh, so uh, many times it might occur that the patient might suddenly deteriorate and he might fall down unconscious in a unknown land usually at that point of time what happens is that the uh, uh, people who are standing by they usually check your pockets to find some health card and if at all they can understand your disease condition they can rush you to the nearby hospital so if at all you are diabetic hypertensive or have a significant heart problem or a uh, cardiac related problem where you are likely to fall unconscious at any point of time it is always advisable to carry a health card mentioning all your details the contact numbers where uh, the uh, people can contact you especially the numbers which are working in international travel sometimes it happens that because the routine sim cards are not working uh, it becomes an issue that uh, the other people also if they call the uh, coverage is not available so whichever numbers are working and can be contacted in case of emergency those numbers should be mentioned on that card maybe a few extra numbers if they are mentioned it is not uh, it is harmless usually in that cases and the disease which the patient is suffering from and what are the type of complications which might occur to the patient everything should be mentioned in the card so that in case of any emergency or a complication the people who are standing by they might be able to help you in a better way keep the duration of travel as short as possible do not travel for a very long and a very prolonged period because sometimes if any problem occurs during the course of travel then you might be in a problem uh, if at all you have a history of leg clotting or a deep venous thrombosis it, it is advisable not to be sitting there in the same chair or a sitting position for a prolonged period because these patients are very likely to develop clots in the legs which might lead to sudden slipping of the clot into the uh, vessel supplying the lungs and that might occlude the pulmonary vasculature and the patient might die of embolism so if at all you have a tendency of clotting it is always advisable to at least stretch out your legs if at all you are travelling for a prolonged period and a prolonged distance uh, so that the clot in the leg doesn't develop for the patients who are having a recently implanted pacemaker it is always advisable to carry a card mentioning that you have a pacemaker implanted so that in airport when the people are frisking you for uh, security reasons with a metal detector you might show them the card because these metal detectors can sometimes affect the functioning of the pacemaker conduction and if at all the patient is not careful then and the patient uh, is frisked with the metal detector the patient might suddenly drop down unconscious if the patient stops working in such patients usually the security personnel do, do only a hand check and usually they avoid the use of metal detectors hand checking of these patients for security reasons is not harmful but metal detector usage is slightly dangerous for such patients so in this topic i have discussed what all the are the points which are relevant and important for the people who are planning a travel and when exactly and after how many days of a heart attack can you usually you plan a travel and which modality of travel might be more convenient and more safe for the patient i have also tried to uh, pick up on the points and discuss the points where uh, the important tips which should be kept in mind for healthcare uh, for uh, heart related patients so that in case of any emergency they are not left unprepared and they are not left, left in a and cared for position i hope that this uh, topic was clinically relevant and useful for you the purpose of my channel is that i am trying to uh, discuss with you uh, the common people the relevant points and heart and healthcare related important points are uh, of various uh, regards and various topics are there in my uh, channel for the patients who usually uh, do not have very easy uh, access to healthcare these points i feel are clinically relevant and useful and they may uh, might enable you to manage your disease better and you discuss your disease better with your doctors usually for such sort of information we tend to depend on our uh, doctors and our friends and relatives and on google 
to give us all the information but doctors due to time constraint may or may not be able to give you all the information friends or relatives and google might be giving you some half information which might be sometimes even detrimental for the patient if they follow this sort of information if you like the concept of my channel please like my channel subscribe to my channel and if at all you feel that the concept of my channel is interesting you can share the link of the topics with your friends and relatives who for you whom you feel that the content might be relevant if at all you find that there are some topics on which we should discuss related to heart and healthcare you then you can mention about those topics in the description box below so that we can cover those topics in the future videos so this is dr nabin agrawal and i am signing off and i thank you all for a very patient listening and i hope that the topic was clearly relevant and useful for you and i hope to see you back in my next video please like and subscribe to my channel for more healthcare related and useful and scientifically correct information thank you